Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Stephen for Techie here. It's been a while since we've done an in-depth Siri shortcut tutorial, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can create a new smart home automation which will work something like this. So this shortcut has a lot of different elements to it, bringing together your HomePod Mini, HomeKit devices and Siri shortcuts, so it will really help you to get the most out of your smart home devices. There's a lot to cover here, so let's jump straight into it. So opening up the shortcuts app, you'll be greeted with this display which shows you all of your existing Siri shortcuts. Along the bottom you can see the automation tab, which is where we want to be, so click on that. This will bring you to the automation tab along with a list of all of your existing home automations. By pressing the plus button in the top right corner, you'll begin the process of adding a new automation to this list. Once you've selected this option, you'll be given the choice as to whether you want to make a personal or home automation. In this incident, you'll want to choose personal automation as Apple's home app still doesn't recognize NFC chips as a specific device. This panel then opens up a range of different options. Scroll down to about the middle of this list where you can then see NFC, which then brings us to the next stage. Opening up the NFC options, you'll now need to write the instruction directly to your NFC tag. Press on the word scan and your iPhone will prompt you to hold the device near the NFC tag that it is that you want to use. You'll get a little positive tick and a noise when it connects and you'll be able to name the NFC tag for future reference. In this case, I'm just going to call it Music NFC. Once you're done with that, hit done and then hit next in the top right. Okay, so far so good. So we've got our NFC tag primed for the next set of instructions we're going to give it. We want our music to play through the HomePod Mini we have here in the studio, so the first thing that we want to do is set playback destination. If we press add action, it will open up an array of different options to choose from. If you click on the search bar, we can then search for change playback destination and then choose that option when it comes up. Once that's loaded into the action queue, we want to then make sure that the first word is set as that is what chooses the destination, and that the final word of the instruction is your HomePod's name and not your iPhone. If you tap on the word iPhone, it will then load up other compatible devices for you to choose from, including our Studio HomePod, as you can see here. If you can't see your devices, make sure you are connected to the same Wi-Fi connection as your HomePod or Apple TV. This is a common mistake which a lot of new users make when first using Siri shortcuts. The next thing you'll also want to do is to check the volume level. This may appear in the next action suggestions bar, but if it doesn't, go back to the search bar we mentioned earlier and look for set volume. By adding this function, you'll be able to choose the volume the music track will play with. This will be expressed as a percentage, so 50% is halfway to maximum volume. The next thing we now want to do is add in what we want the HomePod to play. Again, play music comes up for us here in the next action suggestions tray, but if it doesn't, the search bar again will be your friend. When we add the play music command, it will then load into the queue as you can see here. Tap on the word music and this will open a range of options you've got within Apple Music. You can load in radio channels, playlists, albums or just single songs, whatever your preference is going to be. Just jumping in with a quick interlude here. If you're enjoying this video, make sure that you're subscribed to HeyTechie. We get tons of viewers and if content like this is your thing, you'll definitely want to be subscribed so you don't miss out on our future videos. Remember, it's totally free to subscribe and it helps us keep making content which we hope you find to be really useful and worthwhile. So hit that subscribe button and let us know that you like this video too by liking it and leaving a comment down below. Okay then, so back to the tutorial. After adding your musical preferences and hitting next, it will then open the final stage of the process. I recommend that you turn off Ask Before Running, as otherwise you will always need to confirm that the shortcut will run using your iPhone, which kind of defeats the purpose of it in my opinion. 
You'll be given a little warning message when you disable this feature though, but click don't ask and then turn on notify when run. This will prompt a little notification when it is run and I personally like this feature because it's an affirmation that my iPhone has scanned the NFC tag successfully and it can sometimes take a second or two for the music to start playing so sometimes it can be a little unclear. And that's pretty much it for the basic edition of this shortcut at least. Go mount your NFC tag somewhere creative and have fun using it. Why not try mounting it in a frame behind a picture of your favourite album cover or on a world map so that you can be reminded of your favourite holiday music from when you visited a particular country. But what if we want to upgrade this basic shortcut to the next level? Well, there's a range of things that we can do for this to make this NFC shortcut even more useful or to add to the overall experience. If you've got smart lighting in your home, you might like to set a particular scene to go along with playing music. For example, the Onvis K1 light strip has a ton of functionality added to it, including the ability to react to music with the onboard microphone. If you've got a HomeKit scene with this connected into, you can also add this into the NFC shortcut. In a previous YouTube short video, I explained exactly how you can set this up for the Onvis K1 light strip, so I won't go over that again, but this is how you can add a HomeKit scene into this NFC shortcut. Going back to the shortcut action queue, go to the search bar and type in Home. In doing so, you'll be given a range of different options, including Control My Home, and it's this option that you want to choose. Tap on this and you'll then be prompted to set scenes and accessories. Tap on these words and it will open up all of your HomeKit scenes so you can control any and all of your HomeKit devices and scenes as you see fit. Now for this video I've planned ahead and I'm using a HomeKit scene that I made especially for this video which is what I'll load in. This includes the Onvis K1 light strip turning on and setting to the music mode so we'll get some cool light strip effects as the music plays. If you're adding this in as you follow this video you'll now have this option at the end of the queue and although there's no particular problem with this for me I'd move this command up to the front of the queue so it happens straight away after the NFC is scanned. In order to change the order, press and hold the HomeKit action that you see in the queue and you'll get some haptic feedback from your phone. Once this happens, drag your finger up and you'll now be able to move the order around, so in this case I'm going to put it first in the queue. Okay, so that's a nice bonus feature, but what if we want to do something that's a little more complicated? If the music is being played during the day and the light strip is bouncing, we won't be able to see the effect very well with bright sunshine coming through the window. So therefore, we want the SwitchBot curtain robots to close as part of this NFC automation. But we don't necessarily want to have the curtains to close all of the time. Now we can add in a time variable conditional which will really bring this shortcut to the next level. There's a couple of steps to this process, but I think it's worth it and it can be done. The first step will be to add in the date command, which we can easily do by typing date into the search bar. And then once that's in, move it up to the front of the queue. You'll next want to add in the format date option, which again you can find easily using the search bar. There's also a small arrow to, next to the format date command and tapping on that will open up all of the formatting options that we've got here. On the date format line, tap on short and then change this to custom. We're doing this because we don't actually need the date at all, but this function gives us access to control the time and that is what we do want to have. Once you've done that, you'll see that the format time option disappears underneath and it's replaced by format string. Because we're only interested in running the curtain robots at certain hours of the day, go ahead and delete all of this default string and we want to replace it with a single capital H. Great, so if you're still with me, we're now going to move to the next step, which is to convert that time input to a number as this is how Siri Shortcuts needs to process it. Go back to the search bar and this time look for Get Numbers From Input. 
When you tap on that, you'll see it automatically has added get numbers from formatted date, which is exactly what we want to see. With the time now formatted the way that we can use it, we now want to turn our attention to the if function. Go to the search bar and type in if, and then you'll see under scripting this option, which has two diverging arrows as its icon. Choose this and you'll see that it loads in several commands into the actions queue all at once. Now again, Siri shortcut is clever here because it's worked out that we want to use the numbers from the format date function that we've set up above. That means that we just need to tap on condition and it'll be given a load of different options which gives us control over what we want. In this case, choose is between and then two numbers that you can go for should be hours of daylight wherever you are in the world. In this case, I'm going to go for starting at 9am and ending at 7pm. After this command, it is now time to add in the SwitchBot curtain shortcut. Again, this is something that I've covered on how to do this in a previous video, but it is very easy to do within the SwitchBot app. You will just need to prepare this first. Now, assuming that you've already got that Siri shortcut to close your curtains, go back to the search bar in shortcuts and then tap on it again. And this time, instead of searching, notice that there are two different options between categories and apps. This time, tap on apps and then swipe down until you find SwitchBot. When you tap on it, the list of shortcuts which you've already got associated with the app will open up. And in this case, I want to use my closed curtain shortcut. Add that in and then that's this part of the tutorial finished as well. You can delete the otherwise option here as it's not needed in this particular case, but you could easily play around with this further so that a different HomeKit scene is triggered depending on what time it is that you scan your NFC. The possibilities of using Siri shortcuts is absolutely endless, so my advice to you is to go and have some fun with it. And so there you have it folks, that's about all we've got time for in this tutorial video. I really hope that you've enjoyed it and that you'll get some great news out of this new addition to your smart home. If you like this video, please make sure to go and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe too if you've not already done so. It really means a lot to us to see the channel keep growing. And better yet, why not share this tutorial with a friend so they can develop their smart home skills as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time then, I've been Steven for Hey Techie.